One of the myths that's been intimately interwined with the Garden of Eden myth is the story of Soma and his Persian counterpart, Haoma, particularly the Persian counterpart, uh, Haoma, where the Haoma and the White Home are in the uh, Eden, uh, and there's a serpent in there. It's a very, very similar story. Well, this has been a, a great philosophical debate amongst people interested in the origins of antheogens. What was the historical Soma and Haoma plant? And uh, um, Generally, uh, um, the theory of R. Gordon Wasson, who, who did us a great service, by the way, of uh, pointing out the role of psychoactive substances in, in, in the realm of religious thought, um, and uh, came up with the term entheogens to differentiate from terms like psychedelic and hallucinogen to uh, put a connotation that entheogen means spirit created within, to put in the connotation that uh, people were uh, taking these substances to kind of get in contact with the spiritual realm. Uh, well, recently there's been uh, some archaeological digging going on in the Karakum Desert in Central, uh, the, the Central Asia, in the, in the Russian desert there, just off of Iran. And uh, they believe this is the uh, uh, homeland of the Aryan, common Aryan ancestors of both the Persians and the Sanskrit authors of uh, the Rig Veda. And, uh, um, in fact, Iran means Aryan, and these people actually lived in this exact area. Well, they've uh, found a, uh, a, a site with a temple about the size of a football field. And uh, this fellow here, Professor Sarian a Rus Russian archaeologist, I brought a picture of him just to show you this guy's not a head. He's just some old archaeologist who's digging around. So he's not coming from any particular mushroom camp or cannabis camp or anything like that. He's an independent archaeologist working for the Russian government with other archaeologists. And uh, he's been heading up the dig in uh, Kirikum Desert. And uh, here you see uh, an outline of the temple that they found. And there's a, a, a smaller picture of the temple there. Now this temple, like I said, was about the size of a football field. And more than half of the area of the temple itself was dedicated to making the Soma drink. And they know this was a, a, a proto-Zoroastrian, and these were one of the groups that used the Haoma uh, um, temple because of fire temples and other aspects of, 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 of the temple itself. And there were, in fact, three of these temples in the ancient world. And it, you have to imagine, like, the size of this thing, this was a major depot uh, um, at, at this time in the world when people were traveling and making uh, exoduses to this thing from all over the ancient world. It was, a, it was obviously a major spot of worship and initiation. So uh, um, it's a pretty fantastic find, really. And uh, um, Serianati found a number of pots and other remnants uh, at this site. And in fact, what we see here are some of the pots that were actually used for making the Soma beverage. And this is like a major historical step because up until now, it's been all speculation about what was used as the Soma, what plants were used and stuff like that. Uh, but now because of these archeological finds, uh, um, we can begin to answer that question. Uh, um, here we see a pot, like, okay, I should point out that Serianati uh, um, scraped white sediment off these pots and he had them tested, and they tested positive for both cannabis and ephedra. Now, ephedra itself is on the verge of being banned because of uh, it's a product of ephedrine. It's kind of an upper plant. Wakes you up a little bit. It may be a good thing to mix with cannabis, in fact, to uh, kind of like the Ganja Java Yoga a lot of us practice these days, where we're you know, drinking a bit of coffee to keep going under that, that ganja. But, um, with these pots here, see what would happen with the soma is they would beat it with rocks, mix it with milk and the ephedra, and they would pour it through this uh, pot here, you can see with a hole in the bottom, and wool would be placed on that, and that would strain out all the vegetative matter, and then they'd capture the drink in the bowl below, uh, and then imbibe it in a ritual as soma. Now, this is kind of similar to the whole process of uh, bubble bags in, in our modern time, where the uh, leaf matter is restrained. Here they're using a wool filter and letting the uh, trichome-rich milk pour through it. And uh, um, we can be sure that this is cannabis, not only from the white sediment, but because of uh, these bigger areas where they were beating the plants. There's a, a bolt basin here. Below we see some seed imprints. And uh, these are cannabis seed imprints going back 4,000 years old. So this is 4,000 years old, but by the time this temple was built, we have to imagine the whole cannabis religion complex had been going on for probably close to a millennia. We already have uh, um, evidence of smoking cannabis going back more than a thousand years before this 4,000 year old find. So by this time, this was a, quite a structured religion. And uh, this has really revolutionized the uh, whole, whole concept of uh, 
birth of religion. The, so, the, the, the Vedic religion, the Persian religion of Zoroastrianism, without a doubt now we can say originated with a cannabis fertility cult.